Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a minute. Uh, before I go any further, I got to do the whole, you know, social media spill. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, click follow. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity right now to give a shout out to our sponsor of this episode, which... I don't know if they know that they're sponsoring this episode, but a big shout out to Fresco Taco Spot for, Fresco. Taking, for taking care of me and my guests last night. Uh, they always take care Man. of us. Shout out to Fresco Taco Spot. Well, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, my next guest. I had to like fucking <laughs> twist his leg, put him in a fucking, uh, you know, in a submission hole just to get him to, to, to agree to do this. Uh, <laughs> he's a legend. Uh, man, without, man. Hey, Welcome to the Smooth Vega Podcast, baby. Good. Bash, it's how are you all doing? Good. It's all good. I love it. I love being here. We've had some good times the last couple of days out here, yeah. taking care of some business. And uh, shout out to Frescos. Oh man, great food, babe. man. Great food. They actually took care of the whole entire. Staff. I never, been, I never been in a restaurant where you could smoke weed in it, though. That was tight. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, you get special, uh, special tight. treatment whenever you're baby bash. Oh, really? That's only for me. Uh, yeah, that's only for you. God damn, that was good. That's a good treatment <laughs> right there. I never, I never been in a restaurant and just blow big, though. You know, funny enough, I brought Paul Wall to the production studio about maybe three or four weeks ago, and Fresco actually brought the taco truck here. That's that Paul Wall treatment. <laughs> Not that Paul Wall. Shout out to my boy, Legalizer, Paul Wall. Hey, you know what, though, man? So, you know, I know I was kind of cracking a joke right now, but you have vowed to no longer do podcasts, so thank you for being on this one. But why is that? Why is it that you're just like, I don't want to do no more interviews? Well, a lot of podcasts, they just want to start some shit and mm -hmm. get all the views and get all the money while now all of a sudden you got an enemy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All because... Some shit got pulled all all of a sudden because now you talk shit about somebody when it just it just too much drama, dog. And and I don't knock podcasts. There's some dope podcasts yeah, out there. Don't sure. don't 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 get me wrong. I'm just saying people are chasing I, the clickbait. I I, I I don't like talking about myself that much. It's not yeah. like it's not like you know, like I said, podcasts are there's some dope podcasts out there. I'm not knocking the podcast host. I'm just myself. I'm not the type of person that wants to just uh, you don't want to stir up talk the pot. about myself. You, you know know what also mean? don't want to stir up the pot because I think you've been asked so many of the same questions for so long and usually when something like pops <laughs> up, they're like, oh, hey, what are your thoughts on this? And like, really, I don't uh, care. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, the podcast that I've, that I've done and that I will do because I, I will do more podcasts and, uh, but I don't like to do a gang of them and shit where everybody, you know, wants some clickbait. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just, I'm, I ain't got no enemies. I ain't never had, you know what I mean? I ain't got no drama in my life. I ain't never had no drama and I don't want to have no drama just for a fake clickbait or some shit. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And, and that's what's happening. And I feel bad for, for a lot of artists that get caught up in some shit that they really shouldn't have got caught up in. Well, look, congratulations are in order. Uh, sugar, sugar just hit four times platinum a few weeks ago. Yeah. Congratulations on that. It's like the song, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, it's a, it's a huge <laughs> yeah. record. You know what? I, I And I tell you this, and I've told you this last night, and I've said this uh, multiple times. What I think is so dope about where you're at in your career today in 2023, Baby Bash, uh, you know, I know you don't like talking about yourself, so I'm going to do the talking. <laughs> uh, legend, right? Uh, really kind of, I say, you know, you're the first of your kind. You know, you, MC Magic, uh, Little Rob, Frankie J, you guys are like... Chicano legacy acts, right? Uh, you guys legacy. are. Legacy. Ooh, I like that. Legacy? You, legacy. You guys are legacy. doing these tour packages, selling hella tickets all across the country. You guys are doing big rooms. And it's crazy because it's like there was a shift maybe like five, six, seven years ago where the guarantees and the pay was a little bit lower. But as the years have progressed, they've gone up and up and up and up. What do you attribute yeah. that to? I attribute it to what I just mentioned. You guys are now. That representation, the legacy acts. That's pretty funny. I like that word, Chicano legacy, because I like that word, actually. When it comes to like artists like me and Magic and you know everybody that's kind of had our own lane the whole time, it's not, you know, we, and we just gathered up such a, a catalog of music, a catalog of hits, because we ain't had a hit on the radio in over 10 years, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. we still sell out shows like nonstop. It's crazy. It's like 
we do shows and they sell out. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but it's all the people know every word of every song. And you see the parents, the kids. It's crazy. It's like a whole new young generation that discovers Sugar Sugar. Yeah. A cyclone. Uh, uh, something about you, bae. I mean, because it's ear candy. And I think ear candy is always going to stick. You know what I mean? So, you know, you do these concerts and I, I, the different age groups that are there, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. And uh, traveling around the world and people singing the songs just... It's crazy to me. I mean, you just mentioned to me that you're going to be uh, overseas. I think you said you're going to Australia in a few weeks. Yeah, I got to go to Australia in, in, in a couple of months. Actually, well, actually a couple yeah. Of months. Yeah, but you know, regardless, you know, even being able to be this deep into your career, 20 years plus, you know, and you're still going worldwide, <laughs> yeah. worldwide. This shit is like it's yeah. so crazy to me because you mentioned the generations that go to the concerts. You see the the kids, the parents, the grandparents, even now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's like they've the passed the theos, the theos. You know what I mean? They're all well, just jamming they, out. They've passed along the music. And even with yeah. TikTok, you know, with the with the the emergence of TikTok, I want to see Sugar Sugar was like, oh wow, yeah, that's a big check for me. <laughs> that's a big check for me, man. <laughs> you know, but yeah. it's so cool to see that. Like, it's just like, like again, I think it's so important when it comes to you know our culture, the Mexican American culture, mm -hmm. in specific. Um, you know, we just haven't had a lot of artists that have been that for us, and I think you. MC Magic, Frankie J, Little Rob, Amanda Perez, mm -hmm. you guys all represent and embody that. And I think it's it's so dope to see that. So, you know, like I look up and I, I see your show calendar. I'm like, this dude, ain't, you ain't got no fucking weekends off. Damn, dog. I'm, I'm working harder now than I did when I had a number one song in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like back when the Sugar Sugar was cracking the Cyclone, I, I was doing a lot of shows. But even now today, I'm doing more shows. I'm turning down shows. I'm turning down countries because i got to coach my kids you know what i mean like I, i'll turn down some money and some shows to coach my kids you know what i'm saying I, yeah. and i just have to to, to keep my sanity you know to keep my my shit grounded i mean i hear you uh so look i you know i so many questions i want to ask you but one of the things that i did want to ask uh is in specific you've been around as long as you've been around um how how do you get tired of being asked about like SPM and those questions regarding that? People like to ask a lot of questions about that. Like, yeah, how do you feel about when people do ask about you know SPM? Yeah, specific? it's a uh, you know yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy because I think people assume that I'm like Mr. Dope House. Like I was a you know what I mean like like I just know all the information and I was there every day, twenty four hours a day. And <laughs> Baby Bash knows it. No, I wasn't around that. But you got to understand, I was we were. I was doing music over there and working with everybody, but we were out hustling and I wasn't just chilling like that. So I don't know everything that went on, but people just think, oh, Baby Bash knows everything. No, I don't know everything. I keep telling people, they ask me about the case. I'm like, look, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. If I did know, believe me, I'd make my fucking mark. Yeah. But all I know is the people that know is them. And if anything happened like that, then it's the lowest, he's the lowest piece of shit motherfucker. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and that's just how I feel about it. People always ask me, you know, do you do it? Do it? I don't know what he did. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So. Well, you know, I think it's interesting because um, sometimes people don't know how to separate the the music and the personal, right? So, like, yeah, you have a music. You know, obviously, you have a relationship. You know, like obviously working with him, but it's a lot of it's based off of the music. So, yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, it's, you know, hey, you know, with all due respect, that's his personal situation, so be it. But I did want to ask you one thing about uh, SPM in regards to professional, which is something that you mentioned to me last night, which is like, whenever you saw kind of the 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 ascension, uh, you know, at this time, I think you said you were still kind of kind of breaking in. But when he was peaking, mm -hmm. you mentioned that there were certain shows that he would do with other national recording artists. And those artists would like. And specifically in Texas, down south, yeah. Houston, San Antonio, yeah. these national acts would refuse to go on after him. And it's yeah. like the promoters and everybody's like, yo, SPM needs to go last. Yeah. And uh they would be like, We're not going after after Mexico. Yeah, there right? would be the big national yeah, the big national artists that would come around, come to town, they'd have big, huge car shows and shit like that. So back when he was peaking, but he wasn't really peaking like on the radio that he was already peaking before he got on the radio. He had a, he already had a big buzz. So when major artists would come to town, they'd be like, what, who, who's going on last? No, nah, because some artists, they have ego. Some artists, they want to be the headlining act. We want to go on last, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me, I don't give a shit. Put me on first, second, third, give me the fuck up out of there if, you, if it's all that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. the national artists, they want to come on last. So they're like, no, we ain't having this. Who is this guy? He ain't going to go on headline over us. So then they say, all right, let him go first. So uh, they let SPM go on first. 
and the crowd would be so packed, going crazy. And then when he was done, half the crowd would leave. That's crazy. More than half the crowd. And I think as you as you experience that and as you see that, because I'm sure you experienced some of that in your career as well. Uh, yeah. The 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 power of the culture, you know, like I feel like there's such an appetite for you know um, Mexican Americans wanting to see people represent them on represent them on stage, on screen, in music. And I think when when he came along, and I've said this before, by the way, uh, that there's a lot of variables that played a part into why he connected. And then you come along, and you have have so much commercial success like you know people don't realize the extent of the commercial success that you had like you were on fucking trl with carson daly and shit you know what i mean like you yeah. know your record was getting rolled out you're all over the radio you know your platinum record i mean like i don't even know in retrospect how much you've really like i mean i'm sure you know because you play shows but like the the, the enormity and the magnitude of how big a baby bash was whenever that that happened like you came in right after like SPM left, you know, he went, mm. he went away, and then commercial success, you, commercial success, Frankie J. Well, I had that song, Sugar Sugar, for a while. I thought it was too soft. I was like, man, I ain't putting this shit. This shit's kind of weak. Kind of, It's like lovey-dovey, right? <laughs> yeah. And I, mean, I was kind of soft and shit. You know what I'm saying? Kind of, even, even though I was get, talking about getting high, I was like, man, just kind of kind of soft. And uh, people would always tell me, Man, beach, do some radio shit. Dude, you got you got hella bitches. You got you got hella girls. Imagine if you put a song on the radio. And so I said, man, I, and then Frankie got a deal with, Frankie had a deal with uh, Columbia. Yeah, I remember that. So then I heard him on the radio. I said, oh shit, I got a song with Frankie. Let me go. Got that shit. Check this out. And then the Corpus Christi, the first one to play it, Ed O'Connor's played it, and it took off ever since. And that's it. And everybody started playing. The phone lines lit up, <laughs> and that was. My life has never been the same. Well, you know, I mean, I guess now, um, you know, here in 2023, uh, I don't know how much, you know, you say you don't like talking about yourself, but at this point, you're considered an OG. You've been around. You're a veteran. You, you've uh, you've toured. Double OG. Double OG, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm an I'm a older, a older OG. One thing that I respect about you so much is that I've seen you, uh, you know, figuratively not literally but put your arm around some of the new talents that 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 have come in you know from gt gars and crystal pop and you know you did some stuff for xb valentine you've worked with louis the singer and so many artists over the years that i've seen you you know mikey jimenez now um like you've paid it forward like you know you are now someone that has a platform and has had a platform and you've taken that platform and you bring it back to the next generation of mexican american artists and latinos in general that are doing it is it something that you set yourself out to do like is it important for you to do it or is it just like hey if you're dope you're dope um yeah it's it's important that i do it but i also gotta like i said i, I love my my father life i love being a father i'm a father before anything so i'm a father first and i have to have my time for that everything besides that yeah i love working with new talent there's so many great artists that are so dope whether it be rapping and singing i love to write not only for myself i write for other people i've wrote i wrote songs for other artists and shit so and then if when i work with artists you know i might work out some deals and say hey i'll put you out you know what i mean get it going i got my oldie doo-wop album the bash tones like the lowrider cruising music like the yeah. oldies soldies but goodies man and yep. me and danny trejo machete got a whole line of that style of music where it's for the low lows and you can cruise and just that saucy fly soul chicano soul music you know how did you and danny connect i've never asked i never actually i don't know if i know the backstory to how i met you and danny i met danny with kid frost back in the day day shout out to frost yeah and then me and Merciless from the Funky Ass Takes. We we seen him at a couple of uh, my cousin. My cousin had to go. Uh, he had got out of prison. He was a, a, a drug addict, so he had to go to this little this drug addict convention where all the drug addicts they go. It's a big convention, an ex drug addict, people trying to get off drugs, and they'd have a speaker like somebody talked to him. And one of them was Danny Trejo. Oh wow! Yeah, Danny Trejo was speaking to the to the drug addicts, and one was my cousin. And then we stayed and he remembered me, meet me with uh, Kid Frost and we just hung out. And after that, we just, we've been tight ever since. That was like in the nineties. Man, that's crazy. I, man, so you go back with, with him then. I, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I we'll go was, way back. You know, you mentioned fatherhood, you know, and I, I always say no hood better than fatherhood. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like as your kids have gotten older that it's become more like, more important to be present because now they're more aware and you know they're more alert uh and i know that obviously you're on the road all the time 
And like you said, you, you know, you're getting booked frequently, frequently, frequently. Uh, but, you know, because I don't know how many kids you have, but I, I know I see your son, Brando. Yeah, I, I got three kids, Brando, Presley, and June June. So as your kids are getting older, like, is is it, you mentioned, like, father first. Is it just more important for you to be present? As I mean, you've always, I'm sure it's always been important, but now that they're. Since day one. They, since Brando, since Brando Ray was born, dog, man, it changed my whole fucking life. Fuck me up, dog. <laughs> I was a cold hustler player, man, out there wiggling, getting it, having hella, you know, I still have fun, but out there just wiggling, you know what I mean, moving place to place. And then when I first had Brando, boom, everything changed, that one shot. And I liked that better. People always ask me, like, man, dog, Playboy life, you know what I'm saying, be having all, you know what I mean, yeah. think I go out and have Playboy life and shit. And, you know, yeah, that was cool, but. Being a father beats that. Getting up at fucking six thirty, seven in the morning, man. Taking my kids to school, <laughs> man. Tell them what you know. What I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying, dressed up, getting right. I know. I saw you. I saw a tweet recently that you posted. You're like, I love man, it. You're like, who would ever thought me the 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 green eyed lady killer would be? I didn't say green eyed lady killer. Dog. I didn't say. I never <laughs> call myself green eyed lady killer, dog. But I probably said me. I said like living so the Playboy she, life and shit. Yeah, some shit like that. that. Said, nah, I ain't never said call myself a green eyed lady killer. <laughs> Whatever it was that you said, it was something along the lines I'd of. A, I'd be a weirdo <laughs> if I said that. <laughs> but it was whatever you said. It was in regards to you know yeah, being, yeah. being a player. But you're saying like now you just love the dad life. Man, I love the dad life, dog. It fucked me up. I mean, in a good way. <laughs> the like soccer I said. dad life. <laughs> oh man, golf carts right to the soccer game, dog. Getting. I'm telling you, I get up hella early. Man. I used to hate getting up early, dog. Now I get up early. Whoop whoop. Eat my breakfast. Get my kids ready. Whether it's, whether it's a soccer game, a basketball game, school. Yeah, I love it. You know, musically, like obviously you've been around for as long as you've been around. And now I've seen you working on some of the, you know, the bash, uh, the ba bash, bash tones, tones yeah, right? The bash, bash tones. tones. And you're working on the stuff with Bash Town. You're obviously, you know, you got Mikey Jimenez. You've worked with Gringo. Me and um, May. We got me and May. She's dope as hell. A little young 16 year old girl from Fresno. Oh, wow. So I, I got to check her out. Yeah, me and May. Yeah, check out her song. It's called Stop and Wonder. So she's a little 16 year old, but she got game. So as I, I mean, right now is that the current music projects that you have, or any you know upcoming collaborations? Obviously, you and Chris Pettis just did a, a record together. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah, and was, I'm sure that's going to lead to more collaborations as well. Yeah, yeah. Me and Chris, man, we kind of click pretty good, man. We go together like Manudo and Lemon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we got a good. Our we love the same type of music. Our style is it's pretty dope, man. So yeah, collabing with him is real dope. I think we got a couple of good collabs <laughs> writing sessions together which would be dope yeah. but as far as like the soul d's and the and the uh bash tones and type of music that's my passion that's what i'm in love with right now i'm you know if i had to choose what to do at a rap or any other type of music i like the soul d's right now the soul d's how did the concept originate like was that just something like man you know what i'm um that's the style of music that i like listening to and you just kind of wanted to modernize it well i've always been you know i Growing up, when I was a little, uh, you know, a little cholo growing up, all I listened to was oldies. Like me and my friends, we were straight fucking creased up, listening to nothing but fucking Gene Chandler and Brenton Wood. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just knew music. Just growing up in junior high, I would memorize all the songs, like all the uh, all the oldies but goodies. Yeah. My friend had 45, little 45 records, and he'd play them. And we'd just go there and chill. We had, didn't have computers or nothing, so we just listened to music. And... uh so that was always engraved in me or watching my tios and tias in the parking lot drinking and getting tore up and we're the little cousins and we're, we're the little kids watching them and they're getting tore up but they're bumping some oldies you know what i'm saying so yeah. that was like a feeling and it must have all blended into me because that's what i like and i've been lucky enough to know how to write them songs because uh trish toledo who's probably one of like the queens of the soldi sound like i wrote her first her first original hit like she was doing covers of oldies and then uh, I went to the studio one time, and Joey Quinones, who was the engine in the hub of the Soldi sound, he had a beat playing, and I just started writing. And Trish Toledo killed it. Trish Toledo just killed it. And after that, that kind of blew up millions of views. Then I wrote another one for her, you know what I'm saying? Then I started doing my own shit with other artists that I knew could sing. And that was it. Like, I would write it and then have them sing it, because I can't sing where shit. <laughs> but you could write. I mean, you mentioned writing Sugar Sugar. You actually wrote yeah, yeah. the, the chorus on that record. You yeah. wrote, correct? All my choruses on all my songs, whether it be Akon or, 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 or you know what I mean, or, uh, Sean Kingston, different hooks is what I wrote. Like I said, if I could sing, if I was a singer, I'd be a multi-billionaire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. With a B. You know, um, 
kind of going back to the beginning of the conversation and we talked about, you know, you being a legend, you and also kind of wanted to reiterate on you paying it forward. I had recently went to LA. I went to K Day, talked to CC Valencia, Valencia, right? Oh yes, she's cool. CC shared a story with me, with me about you, about whenever she left radio. Oh man, what I do, dog? No, you actually helped Don't her. Don't believe it. Oh, okay, you actually helped her. I want to <laughs> say when she she left radio, uh, you actually got her her next gig. I want to say in Vegas at the time, and uh, I just think that speaks volumes of of your influence, your reach, and, and how much you look out for people. Because I'll hear you just in passing talking to people like, hey, pass me a record, I'll pass it along. And again, like, I want to give you your props and I want to give you, as they say, your flowers because you you have been uh, an ambassador for, you know, music, hip hop, you know, for us Mexican-Americans, you, you've you been a great ambassador, bro. Like, and I know you don't like talking about yourself. I'm going to talk for you, man. And, and I think it's important to highlight that because, uh, not everybody's like that, bro. You know, a lot of people, they're very territorial, which is going to lead into my next and final question, right? <laughs> um, you know, you see these guys talking about, I'm the king of Chicano rap, and I'm the king of Latin hip hop, and I'm this and I'm that. They're, it's like a juvenile dick measuring contest, right? And I don't know if it's just for clickbait or whatever, but like, I've never sensed that from you. And the thing about it is, per commercial success, you could let your nuts hang and say that. But you've never done that. You could say like, whoa, 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 hold up. You know what? <laughs> you guys are over here fighting about this and that. But when it comes down to platinum plaques and hit records, I mean, really, who, who there's not really anybody that can that that's in that space with you, man. Like, what are you just kind of your thoughts <sighs> on what I just said, though? You know? I mean, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been hearing that lately about, you know, who's the king and who's the best and. I, when I got into the game, I never wanted to be the best. I never wanted to conquer anything. I never wanted to be the head honcho or the number one guy. I just wanted a piece of the pie and live a good, decent life. That's all I wanted, and that's what I did. Um, as far as being the best, you know, I know I'm not the best rapper. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm not the best rapper. There's some dope-ass Chicano artists that spit gas, and I, and I love it. I'm proud of it. But me, I just more of a songwriter. You know what I mean? I think I was a great songwriter, song creator, because I would the hook, the chorus, the pre cut hook, the the ad libs, you know what I mean? I would just was real meticulous with all my music. And I think I was a, a good song creator, not trying to be the best rapper, but I was one of the best song creators, you know what I'm saying, well, in the game. I mean, I guess the question I, I was trying to get to is within our culture, do you feel that there's like a sense of artist and, you know, we don't have to, you know, say who, but like just that are territorial. Like, is that like a thing? Because for me, I feel like you see a lot of talents that get on and then they get territory and they, they start kind of vying for that position. Like, like not so much have you seen that or witnessed that, but have you ever even experienced like, oh man, what the fuck? I'm not worried about that, bro. I'm just, you know, like, we're just trying to eat. You know what I'm saying? Because you've never been that way, at least for me. No, I've never really thought of it like that. I, um, but you know, yeah, there's, there's a competitiveness in everybody. I don't have no competitive, competitive. There's, there's no one, to compete against, I don't think in my lane, you know what I mean? Yeah. What I do, there's really not no, there's no competition. It's just, I did me, I did it, it worked. And now I'm just gonna keep on grooving with it. You know what I mean? And, and, and ride it out. Uh, the new, the new, the new artist, you know, it might be a little different, man. When you're younger, you, I think when you're younger, you might be a little more, you know, uh, cocky and just, you know, confident. And I think sometimes it just takes one person to take it wrong the wrong way. Maybe you're not even dissing somebody, but they take it the wrong way or, who knows, dog? But I never thought there was a king in, in Chicano rap and white rap and black rap yeah. and purple rap. I don't think there's a king in, in anything and uh because it's not scientifically you can't scientifically come up with the the best. It's it's an opinion. Yep. So it's an opinion thing. So I don't think there's the best all time football player, baseball player, basketball player, rapper, singer. But there's some dope shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you're an artist, and in your case, being a musician, being able to provide for your family, and you know, that's that should always be the end goal. And that's all I wanted. I mean, and you did that. So yeah. congratulations on, you know, your career. Obviously, I would love to go, you know, deep, uh, you know, do more of a deep dive. But we'll do it next time. But I could literally hear your fucking stomach rumbling. You're hungry man, as fuck. I'm hungry as a hostage, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, I need some Olive Garden. You know what I'm saying? I know you're hungry. Uh, <laughs> you've been working hard. But I want to say thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for not only doing the podcast, but thank you for, you know, all the years of your support for my career, uh, all your years of your contribution 
institutions of being part of the you know part of our culture and being able to represent us and always giving back man whether it be to artists to radio personalities you've always done right and, and you're appreciated man and, and you deserve to hear that because you know you're just a cool fucking guy bro and <laughs> you don't really ask for shit you just ask for you to be not a fucking weirdo just respect that's all i ever asked for is respect that's all i need man and you know what i'm saying so i, I salute you and like i said i mean look when i think about the greats mexican americans you know i think you know eddie guerrero i think fucking ray mysterio My you know say i think fucking goddamn baby bash frankie oh, j man. you know what I'm saying Shout i put y'all frankie. in that same in that same you know conversation bro and and i know that generations and generations to come in terms of our culture will always you know respect what you do so thank you and i appreciate, I appreciate you doing it bro that, my friends, is Baby Bash. Yee! Y'all make sure to follow him at Baby Bash. Make sure to check out his upcoming projects. Let's go eat. And he's hungry, so I got to get Man. the fuck. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm good, but All right, thank you.